Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I will be reviewing another Vatan smart home product and it is uh, this uh, smart switch module which you can use to make an old light switch such as this one smart because this is small enough that it is designed to go behind the switch in the socket in your wall and um, this is and I mentioned this product when I reviewed this Zigbee version in one of my previous videos. So this is going to be a Wi-Fi version. So it works with only one ecosystem and that's going to be the Tuya app. And there are two specialties about this product. First of all, this is a no neutral wire version or a neutral wire version. So it actually works in both ways. As you can see, I have wired it up in a no neutral wire version because I have the capacitor installed um, uh, across the uh, lamp. But um, maybe you can see here, there is an end connection here. So if you have a neutral wire, you can use it, uh, you know, with the neutral wire connected directly to it. So I think this gives you flexibility of buying one single product and you can use it in all different cases. If you don't know what the neutral wire is, I mean, in a typical home, when you have a, a you know, a, a switch, a light switch in, uh, in your wall socket, that light switch usually opens or closes the contact between the live wire which is coming your, from your breaker box to the live wire which is going to the lamp. So there is no neutral wire required. But as with any electronic devices that needs to operate under you know, mains power, it needs a live wire and also a neutral wire. But with a no neutral wire version, you can go around with this problem by installing uh, this edit capacitor around your light itself. So that is going to allow some leakage current through to this device to operate. So this is what the no neutral wire switch is about. The other interesting thing about this, which we are going to see in the TUI app, is uh, there are some features within the TUI app for this uh, switch, which actually I haven't seen in um, most of the other TUI devices. I mean, you can configure schedules and timers for this, so when to switch on and when to switch off. But there is also another type of uh, switch option, which is a cycle. So for example, you can set this up to on and off um, in a cycle where you will specify the on time and the off time. And there is also an inching option uh, in the TUI app. So for example, if you switch it on, uh, then it will automatically switch off after, let's say, five or 15 minutes. So if you're installing it in a place where you only stay for a short amount of time and you want the light to automatically go off, you can configure that. And there is also a third option, which is random option. So that would let you turn on the, ra the lamp randomly. So it, maybe it can be used in an anti-burger situation where your lights would just automatically come on in random intervals, just to simulate that you are at home. So I think with this, I already covered the main functions of this device. So actually, let's look at the listing to see how much it costs and where can you buy it. So as I said, it comes from the Vatten Smart Home Store. So I'm going to include the link to this listing in the video description. And there are two separate bundles available. So there is a neutral version and there is a no neutral version. So probably the difference between the two is one includes the small capacitor, which is here, and the other one does not. But um, uh, I can see from the connections that, uh, you know, it, it, it should be the same uh, device. And you can see the different prices now, which is in some sort of sale. So it could be more expensive when you purchase it yourself. And if you scroll down to the product description, so you can see the, you know, the main features, what I already mentioned. So there is a neutral version and the no neutral version. And... Um, yeah, it talks about some of the functions, which I think it's, you know, it's fairly typical with the exception of the cycle and the random function, which I haven't seen before. The relay inside the unit is rated for 10 amps, which I think it's typical for light. So you can um, power um, lights up to 400 watts. The one thing I want to spend a little bit more time on is the actual wiring diagram. I mean, I'm going to talk about my uh, specific wiring, but maybe you can just uh, have a look at the different options. And as you can see, the same model is available in a neutral version or no neutral version. And the difference between these um, the diagrams basically is that you don't have to connect the, the neutral connection. Uh, but if you don't do it, then you need to ins install the capacitor. Um, actually, I think there is probably some typo in this diagram because I can see that, you know, this is a different image with a slightly different uh, pinout. So I think what you should be looking at is the small leaflet, which is provided. 
because that has all the different diagrams that you need to follow. And then this diagram is going to show you again the versions, how you do the connections when you have a, a neutral wire or when you don't have a neutral wire. I think that's probably more appropriate. Actually, I'm having it upside down. So that is probably more appropriate for you know the installation of this device. I think probably if you pause the video, you would be able to see this. So instead of going through the listing and go through the uh, functions that we are going to see live anyway, I'm probably just going to talk about the uh, connection. So uh, just by following the labels, I think it's pretty easy to figure out the, uh, the connection already. So as I said, I have this set up in a no neutral wire setup. So this black wire is my incoming live wire. So that comes from the breaker. I mean, at the moment, I'm just using a, you know, a socket, a plug. So that goes into the L connection. And then the other live wire, which goes to the light, is connected to L1. So that is the light one line. And of course, the other side of the light is connected to the neutral wire. And you connect the capacitor across the lamp or the two terminals of the lamp. And that this is how the circuit is connected. If you have neutral wire, so basically the blue wire, then you don't have to connect the capacitor and then you just can connect this neutral wire also to the end terminal which is the rightmost terminal up here and connecting the switch i mean you just take a normal rocker switch and then you connect it between the com and the s1 so that's easy so let's see how this unit behaves in the two app i've already done the pairing but um, the pairing was fairly easy i mean i just followed the normal pairing process just like for any other device and uh, by the way if it doesn't go into automatically into the pairing mode you can click on this button here just long press until it starts flashing you can see the small blue status led in the background so once it is in uh, once it, it flashes then it's in the pairing mode so i just selected plus and add device and I selected this one here, which says BLE plus Wi-Fi. And I just followed the on-screen instructions, you know, provided my SSID and the user ID for my Wi-Fi and the new unit was uh, added. And this is what the default name of this uh, switch was. So this uh, CB2S163-1. And if I go into the details, then I can see that, well, it has one single switch face. I mean, you know, what would you expect is a single gang switch. And if I switch it, then the light comes on. And if I do it again, then the light goes off. You can probably hear the uh, clicking in the background. I mentioned for the Zigbee unit, it was completely silent. Here you have um, like an audio feedback from the relay that is clicking inside the unit. And of course I have the switch as well. And if I operate the switch, the light obviously turns on and I can see the status change on the UI as well. And if I turn it off, then the switch is turned off. So it is a very simple control, but I mean, it is a simple light switch. So we shouldn't really expect anything more. You're also getting a hint that if you want to rename this uh, switch one, you can just long press it and then you will be able to rename that. So let's look at the various uh, timer functions. So this is where all the timers are uh, configured, what I already mentioned. So let's start with the first one is a countdown. So let's assume that you switch the light on and you want some sort of like a sleep function that you want to turn it off after 15 minutes. Then you set the time and then you click on the play button to start the timer. So this is a one time timer. You can also have schedules where you can specify an hour and a minute and the days of the week and within that whether you want to switch to either turn on and off. So you can build up a schedule of uh, this particular light turning on and off. And then this is the new one. You have this circulate schedule, which um, was there in most of the Suya, uh, son of devices in the EV link app. So that's a different ecosystem. And I could never really find a really good use case and I'm still struggling with it. So what you can configure here is between specific times of the day and also the days of the week, how long the light should be on and then how long it should be off. And it's basically just going to repeat that cycle between the start and the end time. So you can have uh, something like, I don't know, like a blinking light, but I don't know why would you want to blink that. I mean, the only um, example that I could think of is you need a pump which needs to turn on and off. 
but you wouldn't connect a pump to like a 10 amp relay unless it's a really small pump. So maybe if it's like for your you know fish tank, you can do that. And then it would just keep circulating the water and not run the pump all the time, but you know, in just in certain intervals. So yeah, I mean, this is something that you can do. I mean, we already passed 8, uh, 19 p.m. This is why it is not working. But it looks like you can have, have these schedules, so you can have multiple of these schedules, you can enable them and disable them, and it will just cycle the lights. So that's fine. And you also have this random function. Again, you can have a start time and the end time and the, you know, the days of the week, and that's it. And within that period, it's going to, you know, randomly turn on and off. So that was my idea for like a anti-burglar light so that it automatically switches your light, simulating that you are at home. And finally, we also have an inching function. And, okay, it conflicts with the... Confirm? Okay. So it conflicts with the um, cycle time. So this is a sort of the inching function uh, where you want uh, the light to automatically turn off after a certain period of time. I mean, I'm setting something really small, like five seconds here. So you turn your lights on and it will automatically turn off. So if you installing it in a pantry where you forget to turn off the light, but you always want to turn it off after five minutes, you can just come to this inching option and, and configure it like that. And to be honest, this is something that's been in the Sonoff devices for ages, but I have to tell you that probably this is the first time I'm seeing this in Tuya. So I think these are a nice uh, set of functions that are probably going to be useful in some special scenarios. And finally, we reach the uh, system settings or the device settings. So actually, we have two uh, separate settings. First of all, we have the settings button here, and here you can set the relay status. I mean, it says relay status, but I think it should really say power on status. So you can specify what the light should be, whether the light should turn off or turn on, or remember the last status if uh, the power is lost. And in a lot of devices that the power on state is on, which I think is really annoying because then if you have a short power outage in, uh, in the night, then your lights are going to come on, but you can just configure them to either off or remember the last status. So that's the only setting we have. And of course we have the pencil icon on the top right, which gives you more settings. So for example, you can rename the device, you can change the location, and also you can share the device with other users. You can create the group. So if you have multiple lights in the same room controlled by multiple of these devices, you can just put them into the group so they will turn on and off uh, together. So you don't have to operate them separately. And of course, probably the other important feature is if you would have any device update, you would be able to install it here. So this would be my review of this Vetten Wi-Fi Smart Switch for Tuya. If you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave purchasing links uh, to AliExpress in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.